Hello, my name is Dr. Timothy Woodward. I'm a professor of medicine here at Mayo Clinic Jacksonville. My specialty is gastroenterology, and my area of interest are GI malignancies. I'm here to talk to you today about colorectal cancer. I have a personal interest in the disease, first from an academic standpoint, but also from a personal standpoint in that I have had several friends, and particularly a good friend, whose son has died from colon cancer at the age of 32. In this talk today, I'm just going to go over sort of a good outline as to how colon cancers evolve, that is how they come about, what do we do to detect them, more importantly, what can we do once a cancer is found? So let's start off with some basic medical school approaches to what is the colon, what does it do? The purpose of the colon, best way to think of it is that it's a sponge. It absorbs water and electrolytes as they pass through the small intestine into the colon. And then finally, the residual material goes into the rectum, whereby it's evacuated with the bowel movement. Colon polyps develop as a result of the constant process in which this colon grows and continues to maintain itself by producing cells. When that mechanism goes awry, that is, it doesn't work as well in terms of some dysfunction, colon polyps can come about. The causes of the dysfunction of colon in terms of the development of polyps can be derived from one of two basic sources, what you're born with and what you're exposed to. When we talk about born with, there are certain genetic abnormalities that can lead to the development of cancer. What you're exposed to has to do with so many factors that are part of daily living, be it your diet, exercise, stress, environment. Overall, it's the balance between these two factors that lead to the formation of the cancer. The cancer in the colon gets started by a small growth called a polyp. Now the polyp in a colon cancer can occur anywhere, from the rectum all the way to the part where the small intestine connects to the, the colon, called a cecum. And along those lines, that small polyp, over the course of years, will grow. And if the right abnormalities occur, be it by hereditary genetic or genetic changes that can occur through the environment, there will be a click, a change that will move the pop from being benign to malignant. Within the past two decades, we've been able to address this signal, this sort of forewarning in terms of picking up cancer by screening. Prior to the 1980s, unfortunately, we were only able to see colon cancers on the basis of clinical presentation, be it pain, blood per rectum, weight loss. When those changes or symptoms occur, the concern is that, for the most part, we're sort of late into the game in terms of trying to prevent the development of a cancer. By then, the polyp has transitioned from being a benign growth called an adenoma to a malignancy. It was in the 80s that we saw a marked change in our approach by virtue of screening. The screening 
talking about was first looking at markers for blood in the stool, but eventually looking further ahead by looking deeper. And by this we mean the colonoscopy. With the colonoscopy, we've seen a marked improvement in terms of survival and early detection regarding colon cancer. For some numbers, colon cancer is the third most common cause of cancer-related illnesses in the United States. Colon cancer, though, as a cause of death, has decreased over the past few years. By the endoscopy, that is the colonoscope, we're able to pick up a colon polyp before it becomes a cancer. What determines or makes us worry about a cancer arising from a polyp are several factors. Size, generally if it's greater than a centimeter, that means that there are a number of cells that can then group and expand to become cancerous. Number of polyps, that tells us that there is a sort of predisposition, that is the colon is already sort of ready to become an environment for polyps to develop, that other polyps may well contain cancers if they do. And also the changes that we see under the microscope called dysplasia. Again, by virtue of colonoscopy, we're able to pick up these polyps before those changes occur and we remove them. With that, what you have has been a marked decrease in terms of colon cancer incidents over the past decade, as noted by US News World Report and several other international news organizations. What is worrisome, however, is the increased incidence of colorectal cancer in younger people. In particular, uh, most recently, the celebrated African-American actor, Chad Bozeman, who died at the age of early 40s from colon cancer. Again, this is a general trend that we're seeing ominously, an increased incidence of colon cancer in younger populations. Why that occurs is still being determined. Now, what if a cancer does occur? There are so many alternatives in terms of therapies and management that have come about in the past decade, particularly even the past five years. There is, first and foremost, the resection or the cutting out of the tumor by surgery. This has been aided and made easier by virtue of robotic surgery. Additionally, there are circulating factors that can determine whether the cancer is spread by a process called liquid biopsy, which is looking for pieces of the DNA from the tumor within the blood cell, bloodstream. Along those same lines, going back to the point of screening, by looking at that DNA, that microscopic element that determines the mutation in the tumor, we can actually use that for a type of screening. Stool cologuard, for example, is a method of determining whether a cancer might be present by virtue of the stool itself. Understand, however, that a positive stool cologuard, which overall is exceedingly sensitive to picking up polyps as well as cancers. That that positive study, however, means that you will still need to undergo a colonoscopy. If negative, that gives reassurance that you've completed a normal screening test and would not probably need another study for five to 10 years. Back to the point of available modalities to help once a cancer is direct, 
detected. We have, once surgery has been undertaken, several new, as well as established methods of treating colon cancer by way of standard chemotherapies, which have been present for a number of years, but more importantly, targeted therapies directed to what I mentioned earlier in terms of genetic abnormalities within the tumor itself that give us a leverage point to attack the tumor. In addition, there are even newer modalities involving immunotherapy and sort of creating attack cells from our own, own immune cells to go forward and attack the tumor. We're able to do this at Mayo primarily because we work as a team and that we have a multidisciplinary approach that allows us to work together, be it as the endoscopist, that is gastroenterologist, detecting the tumor, the radiologist to help localize whether the tumor has spread, and then subsequently the medical oncologist as well as the surgical oncologist, surgical oncologist who will help eradicate the tumor. There have been so many improvements that have come about, particularly with this coordinated approach, that what was once a death sentence can now be survivable. So there you have it. A short but hopefully um, comprehensive overview as to how we can combat, and not only combat, catch it before it occurs, colorectal cancer. Thank you. I'm Dr. Timothy Woodward.